Um, recording in progress, perfect. So we will record the session, but uh, well, first of all, um, I would like to welcome you all uh, to this round table. This is the last round table of this year after a, a little break that we have. And with this final round table of 2023, we want to enhance uh, knowledge sharing amongst, among cities within the Fab City community. And uh, in today's session, hold on, it's not, yeah, right. Uh, in today's session, we will focus on exploring projects of the two LATAM cities, Fab City Curitiba and Fab City Cord Cordoba, ensuring a deeper dive into the essence of sustainable urban development. We will then jump into the Q&A section where you will be able to ask uh, any remaining questions that you have um, from the speakers. And at the end, we will give you also a overview of the some of the upcoming events. And then afterwards, we will close this session. So why LATAM region? The LATAM region has been uh, very active recently and generating great examples and practices that we believe can inspire the rest of our global community. And this very much relates to the goal of the roundtables as well, which is to promote synergies and multi-level knowledge exchange within Fab City Global Initiative by inviting experts and Fab City representatives to discuss current and trending topics. So Fab City Curitiba at first will take the stage to showcase their outstanding achievement in the Fab City Awards 2023 and their winning project with the title the Food and Nutrition Security Program. Uh, this initiative embodies a holistic approach to city-wide food cycles, emphasizing quality, uh, accessibility, and sustainability. We will have uh, Gabriel Ole Dalmanzo, um, urban, who is an expert in urban agriculture projects and policies. Sorry for my uh, mouth today. We have also Alessandra de Albuquerque, sorry if I'm pronouncing it badly, Rice, who is a smart city and development expert, and Diane Bordignon Xavier who is a nutritionist and project planning and management expert and sec secretary of food and nutrition security at Curitiba. And from Fab City Cordoba, we will, um, they will share valuable insights into their journey towards sustainable and self-sufficient living, offering a glimpse into the innovative projects that Cordoba is creating to transform into a regenerative urban ecosystem. So the speakers from Cordoba will be Alvaro Toledo, who is the director of uh, co-factory at Fab City Cordoba. We'll have Matias Nieto, who is a product designer and uh, a person who's focusing on a stakeholder projects. And we'll also have Lucas Gonzalez, who is programmer and is representing Cordoba Smart City Funding. Um, so this session will be recorded, as we already mentioned. Uh, for the learning and registration registration purposes. If you, if you prefer not to appear on the screen, please uh, turn off your cameras. And for that discussion, feel free to drop the questions also into the chat because we will have uh, Frida who will be moderating the chat, answering the, you the questions, but also providing some useful links and resources that are related to the discussion. So thank you so much for joining today. And without further ado, I would like to give the word first to Curitiba, and I believe that uh, Alessandra is starting the presentation. So Alessandra, if you're ready, you can share your uh, your screen now. Yes, I'm ready. First of all, thank you to invite us again. Uh, it's a pleasure to share Curitiba uh, programs and projects, talk about a little bit our main project that won the Fab City Award this year. I will be very brief because my expertise is more in smart city in the uh, global projects of the city. So I will start, I don't know if it is working. Do you see the second yes. slide or? Okay. So, in Curitiba, we do have like a demand project for the city to develop uh, the city more sustainable and more intelligent. It is called Vale do Pinhão. So we we strategy our projects within these five pillars, uh, legislation and fiscal incentives uh, to change and modernize the legislation, 
uh, digital education and entrepreneurship to foment like the local economy, but also uh, work with kids and the new generation to bring them to this new innovative and technological era. Um, Technology, of course, it is a, a pillar, is a tool to help the city to be more sustainable. Uh, governance and articulation, you will see that our projects is are integrated. We work a lot of the private sector with the communities because we know that it's not possible to do like the uh, public sector cannot do alone. I, I didn't introduce myself right, but I work for the city hall in the Curitiba agency The is the agency responsible for some of the smart city and the um, uh, innovation projects of the city. Uh, so we know that the public sector cannot do everything. We don't have money, we don't have all the people. So we, we engage the population and the private sector to work with us. Uh, and also the last one is where urbanization and sustainability is the main urban project where we see like the urban gardens, urban farm, but also mobility, energy, uh, so we, we work uh, thinking about these five pillars and how we can engage people and connect our, our project with these five pillars. And some points that we are doing like more connect to Fab City. Fab City is uh, a part of the Pignon Valley. It is, um, we do the same goals for both like the Pinon Valley is the project for the city, but because we are a city part of the Fab City community, we also uh, develop a lot of projects uh, trying to achieve the goals, achieve the goals of the Fab City. So one of them is maker culture. Uh, so we promote technology for new generations as well. We do have a program, we do have like more than 33 maker spacers in uh, local libraries. So the kids from the municipal schools can assess uh, 3D printers and to learn the what is the maker culture so they can engage in this movement as well. And we do also have a public fab lab. We, we do we did since 2019 that we have this public fab lab and we did more than uh, 200 projects over there. Uh, the entrepreneurship that I told you, like to foment the local economy, it is really important for us. It is really connect to the Fab City goals. Um, design and circular economy. I cannot, uh, I don't, I won't extend much, but we do have a Curitiba is a city of design from UNESCO. So we work with a lot of these concepts of design and circular economy as well. And sustainability and climate change to preserve our environment and use the natural resource in a smart way and using technology, but also implementing food and nutritional security. So I will leave to my colleagues that we can explain a little bit more about these specific projects and how they are transforming our city. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alessandra. So Diane, I think is next. Hello, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for the invitation to participate in this moment. And I'm going to talk about the Food and Nutrition Program of Curitiba. Um, Curitiba municipality has been working with food supply for over 30 years with a strategic repositioning in the public domain since uh, 2019. This repositioning involved the creation of an organized setting to ensure the human right to adequate food. Uh, this was accomplished through the establishment of a specific coordinating body called the Municipal Secretariat for Food and Nutritional Security, SMSEN. The Secretariat is responsible for governing consolidated initiatives like the Family Warehouse and Urban Agriculture, as well as in innovative projects such as the Urban Farm, Solidarity Table, and Food Security and Nutritional Schools. Um, Uh, these actions form an urban food agenda developed by a collective of stakeholders, characterizing Curitiba's food ecosystem. 
a synergy between civil society, public authorities, the third sector, and private enterprises. Uh, this collaboration constructs uh, a diverse, effective, and enduring public policies that operate cohesively across all stages of the food cycle. The Secretariat works with three strategic lines of action for the construction of a, a sustainable food system. Access to food is made available through a list of programs that aim to combat food insecurity. The Metropolitan Common Market is represented by a working group that promotes the agri-food development of the Metropolitan Region of Curitiba and involves uh, 30, 34,000 farmers. In the urban agriculture, which works as an strategic tool for a multidisciplinary and transversal action to promote the food and nutritional security in urban environmental. Uh, so I'm going to show you a little video institutional to um, see all the initiatives. You, you have the video, Alessandra? Or? I think uh, Natalia or Indiana, did, did you get the video from Diane? Yes, one second. Uh, can you maybe uh, continue and we get back to this, please? Um, perhaps I could present my... Oh. Okay. Co my, my colleague Gabriel will talk about the um, urban agriculture until the video is okay. <laughs> Okay, we've got it now. Oh, okay. Curitiba é conhecida como a capital brasileira com melhor qualidade de vida. A cidade tem 2 milhões de habitantes, o quinto maior PIB do Brasil, e convive com 37 mil agricultores em sua região metropolitana. Curitiba tem desenvolvido políticas públicas inovadoras no âmbito de segurança alimentar e nutricional. Nossa visão é que o alimento serve como estratégia para o desenvolvimento urbano, socioeconômico e sustentável, com a abrangência metropolitana. Nossos programas e ações promovem justiça social e o direito humano à alimentação adequada, por meio de uma pasta própria de estrutura para atender as demandas legítimas da população, com foco em elaborar políticas contra o desperdício, a fome, a obesidade e a sustentabilidade em apoio a modelos de produção sustentáveis e que preserva os mananciais hídricos e o equilíbrio ecológico do planeta.
Thank you. So I'll continue our presentation. Um, Diane just gave you a, a wider vision, a wider scenario of what our policies. And all those policies are, um, are directed to secure food supply within the city. Some of, some of these policies are like short-term policies, like today, people need to eat today. So as you may see in the solidarity table on the video, uh, has provided more than one million meals only this only this year, and the urban agriculture, which I'm going to address now, is, is more like a long term strategy to cope with uh, food insecurity in the, the city areas. So I'll just share my presentation. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. So just introducing myself again. My name is Gabriel, I'm an agronomist, and I I started working here at the municipality. It's been one, two years, and I just learning about this, this program, but I think I can convey a good message today. Um, what is the, the purpose of our, our urban agriculture project? It's mainly repurposing urban whites within the city. So as in, in other cities, there are urban whites and these whites can be used in a good way or a bad way. So in Curitiba, we have this, this situation that we have these uh, power lines, as you can see here in the, on the back, there's a, there's a tower of energy. So we have these power lines that they stretch for miles and miles within the city. And the areas beneath these power lines, they, they just can be used for anything. You can, you can build in these areas for safety issues, of course, and you can uh, have re reforestation in these areas. So these areas become empty, they have no use, and they can be used either for a good purpose, which are urban gardens, or they can be occupied by illegally occupied by um, people without um, homes um, or it can be turned to drug addiction sites. Well, all the bad things can happen in these areas, but when we establish our urban gardens, we repurpose these urban voids. So most of the areas that we have urban gardens in Curitiba are beneath the, the power lines. Which is a good thing because we're not competing with uh, real estate um, developers. We know that's a real problem in other cities to, to develop urban agriculture in areas that could be turned into uh, buildings or houses. It's really hard to compete with the developers. So the, the, the good point about these areas that is that you can just you just can't build anything underneath them. So it's it's there for the taking. It's just to put a fence around it and engage the community and they build and they run these areas on their own. So in numbers, we have approximately 17 hectares, which is equivalent to 50 football pitches. Um, uh, sorry, socks. Gabriel, I don't know if, if it's just me, but for me, it's like frozen the first slide. I don't know if it, other people are seeing the other one. Yeah, and the second slide now, it didn't change. Okay, done. For me, it didn't change. I don't know. <laughs> no, me neither. No. And maybe if you could enter a full screen mode, it would be better. But it changes now. Perfect. So I'm going to go back to the yeah, you know, non full changing. screen change and go back to full screen if it can solve the problem. So in numbers, we have 17 hectares, which is equivalent to 50 football pitches in, in the urban gardens implemented, which this area is distributed in 150 urban gardens. And we estimate the production of 160 tons of vegetables every month in these areas. And we have 30,000 people which are benefited, benefited from these areas directly and indirectly. Directly are those who are actually growing food on there. They're consuming this food 
and and directly the people that are um, together in these areas they they use these areas for for meetings it's it had a really nice social development in these areas so the project is managed by people which means that we give all the support um, in the large and urban gardens, the administration is up to the community associations. We just give them um, technicians, which is my, myself, I'm a technician, and other colleagues. And we provide them with farm inputs like fertilizer, soil, um, limestone for, for acidity correction, seeds, and seedlings. So we just give a kickstart. First, we, um, we surround the area, we put fences around the area. We give them soil, we give them farm inputs, we give them assistance, but the administration is up to them. They, they run the farm on, its, on their own. So they have this one year um, process and after one year they are, they are on their own and they, they are doing a good job. They are, the farms keep on going for five, six, seven years and those are still there. We also have another approach, which we use uh, urban gardens plus agroforest to, to implement a regenerative—that's oh, a hard word—regenerative agriculture. And for some places that we uh, we have this, this is a river here, and we just can't grow things on the sides of the river. We have to reserve um, a minimum of thirty meters, fifty meters. So we just can't put an urban garden on the margins of the river. So we just, we tackle this problem with agroforestry. So we're planting here our native trees and they produce fruit, they produce uh, organic matter for the, for the coming cult cultivation. And in this area we have the uh, ready to eat space. So people here in 30 days, they already have something they can harvest and use in their diets. In this area will become the future an agroforestry where we can grow other things in, in between the trees like cassava, potatoes, corn, everything you can imagine. So it's a, it's a combo strategy where I have an agroforest in an urban garden. Well, we have our <clears throat> urban farm which is a, is a really interesting project. I'm talking for you from the urban farm right now. And it's a school, it's an agriculture school in the middle of the city where everything related to urban agriculture is taught to people. And it's an educational hub for urban agriculture and sustainability. We have solar panels, we collect rainwater, we have this sustainable DNA in the urban farm. And we comprise all activities related to the food cycle, like growing, we grow things, we prepare things on our kitchen. We have a kitchen, industrial kitchen, where we give courses about healthy food, healthy recipes. And we also have a composting area where we process all our waste. And this waste becomes a compost and this compost goes back to the, to the gardens. So we comprise all the, the food cycle and we try to to be zero, zero, a zero waste uh, site. Um, <clears throat> well, the urban farming numbers, we have ministered uh, around 139 workshops so far, in the subjects of agriculture, healthy foods, composting, and beekeeping. We have here on the urban farm in other places of the city, um, beehives with native, native stingless bees. So we have um, attended approximately 1,397 students, which are actually students from universities, but we also have those people that never had any contact with urban agriculture and they're inter interested, in, they are enthusiasts. They come here and they uh, attend all of our courses. You also had free visitors, with your, which are people that come, come here, walk, get to know the place, and hopefully they attend our courses. And we also have four architect startups, 
which were incubated in this, in this area, in this site. Well, the Urban Farm Project just received some awards. For example, in 2021, we received um, the award for a design for a better world. 2022, we had an honorable mention in the Milan Impact Global Forum. And now, 2023, we just got the first place after Fabi City, as you may, as you may know. Just um, uh, about our native English bees. So we have these beehives uh, widespread in the city. We also have them in the farm. Uh, the purpose of these bees are to promote the gene exchange between vegetation aisles in the city. So some, some of you may know uh, when you have these vegetation aisles, aisles, we don't have much, uh, we have, don't have an appropriate gene exchange between those trees. And this, this role is played by the bees. So every, we, our goal is that all the vegetation islands in the city have um, the bees, so they can make this gene exchange between these vegetations. Also the honey that is produced by those bees contains uh, pharmaceutical properties and is highly appreciated in hot cuisine or high cuisine, or I don't know how you refer to those, would be gourmet recipes. It's, high, it's a high valuable honey. And by the end of 2023, we expect to have installed 350 beehives in all schools of, of Curitiba. Um, we also have a new farm on the way. So this farm will be placed in the industrial neighborhood of Curitiba. It will be 10,000 square meters wide. We have vegetable gardens, greenhouses, a co working area, agroforestry, it will be solar and wind powered. And it will be a similar project to this, to this farm, which is bigger. And we expect to be closer to the peri urban areas of the city and to be closer to the, the production uh, areas of the city. Um, in this area, we're going to have a, a bigger agroforest. I don't know if you are familiar with the agroforest concept. Is where you grow is our regenerative system with um, the aim is a constant recovery of soil organic matter through biomass productions of the trees. And in between the trees, we start growing um, the more commonly food like cassava, potatoes, corn, bananas. So it's a really interesting system. In this area, we have now 240 fruit trees uh, already on site and expanding. It's interesting because this is a park. And as you can see, it was just grass. It was a really poor environment. There was no biodiversity here. Now we have 250 trees. And we are going to expand this area throughout the park. And it connects connects a park with the farm. This, this area here will be the, the new farm. So it's a um, technological area connected to the, the park. It's a really interesting combination. Well, that's it. Thank you for your attention. That's the a brief um, report of the Urban Agriculture Program in Guichi. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Fab City Curitiba, for your inspiring presentation. That was amazing. And I would like to now invite uh, Fab City Cordoba, I believe Alvaro is starting with his presentation, uh, to our online stage, if you guys are ready. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Um, it's amazing that you show from Curitiba, congratulations. And are you hearing me well? Perfectly. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Congratulations for to Curitiba. It's amazing what you're doing. Uh, we are learning about the global network, this amazing global network. And it's a pleasure to show what we are doing for to this part of the world. So I began to share the, the screen.
Okay. Just a moment, please. Okay. Well, uh, first, thanks for CoreLab, uh, Cordoba Celera, uh, Municipality of Cordoba, and Cofactory that support this project. And of course, the local stakeholders um, to support this uh, Fab City. So, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Fab City Full Stack, and we are implementing Fab City Full Stack in, in Cordoba. But we believe uh, the first step, because uh, as you know, we are new in the global network. Uh, we are four months uh, since July. So I think the first step uh, before implementing the, the Fab City full stack in our city, the first step is to define a strategy and connect the local community and establish a, a roadmap with stakeholders. What is this? We are implementing the Canvas, thanks for um, uh, Neil Herschenfeld, Thomas Diaz, and Kate Armstrong, the teachers in Bhutan, that show what, uh, how it's working, this, uh, uh, this Canvas. So we are detecting the uh, product capacity of Cordoba, the learning programs uh, in Cordoba, sorry, We are developing uh, developing different projects and identifying the community groups here in Cordoba. And for us, this is the first step to, to make a strategy. Okay. Well, uh, before becoming a member, uh, we make a, a stakeholder event to show uh, how Fab City works to the local community. And after that, we make a local Fab City event uh, uh, once again to show uh, to the community. And I think, uh, as I said, uh, the first step is because for us, it's difficult to show to the institution and the local community to understand how Fab City works, you know. And this event helped us to, to implement the Fab City full stack. Well, uh, after Bhutan, um, we made uh, the first Fab City Festival. It was uh, last Friday, uh, 24 November, into the first Even American Fab Lab meeting. It was uh, very interesting because 22 countries um, participate in this in this event. I'm uh, watching here. Um, Aristarco, Paco Flores from Mexico, and others to participate who participate in in the in the Ibero uh, Fab Labs. So uh, it helped us to to show to the local community and with the um, the social media and the newspapers help us to to show to the community at the first step. Um, we made ten conference, twelve projects exhibition. Three boot camps. Uh, we set up uh, a, a, a live radio for four hours into the terrace, uh, showing the, the the events and the interviews. And we made a, a, a networking with the local community. And well, uh, it helped us to once again to to show uh, to the local community uh, about Fab City. And I'm gonna show you uh, the stakeholder projects. And um, this is, sorry, this is the website of uh, Fab City Cordoba, fabcitycordoba.org. Um, uh, there you can see the, the projects. And well, uh, finally, I, I gonna show the Fab City full stack to implement an, an strategy. I, I think it's, it's very important first uh, to, um, discover the different layers, uh, the, the the seven layers of, of full stack. The first one is to develop in infrastructure and technology for local production. In this way, uh, Fab City works here in Cofactory. We have a thousand 
uh, quad meters uh, in, in our city, but uh, I'm gonna show you the uh, Fab City Hub Cordoba project um, that is 2,500 quad meters. And um, I'm convinced that uh, the first layers, the, the first layer, uh, it's so important to define the future of a uh, Fab City here. So I invite to 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 watch the project. Are you showing a video of our? I'm not sure it's working. Can you guys, Alvaro, can you hear me? Sorry. Has anyone seen what uh, Alvaro is showing or no? Okay, Alvaro, we couldn't see the video. Could you try to share it in a different way maybe? Okay. Okay. Okay, now, now it's working. Yes, we see YouTube now. Amazing. Okay, thank you. We do not have sound though. Well, um, as I said, our vision is to develop 
uh, the, the the first step is is to develop a strong first layer uh, to give to the, the the population of the citizens uh, uh, a, a, a strong infrastructure. Um, so uh, after the the first layer, uh, we are developing the second layer, and Lucas is going. Oh, Uh, Mati is going to talk about this. Hi guys, nice to meet you. Well, I we find here the layer number two, enable new forms of learning. And um, for example, we here in CoFactory we have AR and VR to learn digital fabrication. For example, you can sc scan a code and you can see in your mo mo phone, um, for example, how the router CNC or the laser cut house work, and you can learn about this. And we have FIG, AR and VR solution that is one of our stakeholders that they implement AR and VR solutions to users. And they found that they can learn six times faster and remember the content 10 times more because they focus in this, uh, this attention in learning new things. One important thing about this is uh, IFAG is part of the Cordoba Smart City Founding. It's a project of our city and it's very, very important. Also, we work in the San Pedro Ap Apostle High School with the architecture Carol Burton. And the idea here is Uh, show the kids the kids how we can design and um, produce through the digital fabrication things like this for example this is a small house and they they uh, learn about work um, in in team and the color it color colorative um, design and sorry This is uh, so important because it, uh, uh, when I was in, in Bhutan, uh, Rico was talking about the, the kids and, and the education in the young um, citizens. So it's the first time that uh, we are implementing through uh, Carol Bar Burton, our, uh, architect, we are implement digital fabrication into the high school. Uh, this is Uh, like historical so it's it's important to work with 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 kids and and high schools okay thank you thank you alvaro and last but not least we have a 3d printed academy academia hellbot and this is so important because they facilitate the access to technology and they promote a um, courses of different levels and uh, very affordable prices. And it's, it's really amazing how the 3D print uh, start to, to be more accessible to all these people in, in Cordoba. And we are really happy to, to, to see how this kind of technology helps students and people in our city. Okay. Layer three with Lucas. Hi everyone. Well, as for the third layer of the canvas, um, well, we we have already started with um, well with the founding Cordoba Smart City, and um, we we aim to promote more, uh, the modernization and innovation in, in the public sector uh, by developing and contributing to the development of the smart city we have so far. Um, reached uh, to many um, many um, projects. We we got to present three hundred and eighty five projects, of which sixteen were selected for investment. There was an average of a uh, hundred thousand dollars in um, invested in these uh, startups. Um, We aim to to innovate the the, the state the the city uh, 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 like the full city um, to to make an ecosystem. Um, so far, we we have these um, stakeholders. These these are the examples of the companies, the the 
the projects that were um, founded so far. There are many uh, coming. And um, well, since um, since those projects aim to 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 improve our city in in different ways, uh, for example, we have well, oh, sorry about that. Uh, we have uh, some projects um, intending to to provide loop farms or uh, recycling units like portable recycling units uh, as rescue or um, or bearing like taking into account the disabled people like uh, the blind with projects to help them read to scan um, text and and making things easier for them uh, those those projects are well sorry um, those projects are the ones that um, the, the like constitute the third layer so far, but we intend to 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 make it even to take it even further. Um, and uh, then we for the fourth layer, which. Uh, involves the, the third one that depends somehow in the third one or we try to orchestrate efforts between the local communities and and initiatives and to do that um well cordoba in in 2022 reached uh 50 tons of electronic waste just electronic waste not without bearing in mind um appliances home appliances and 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 other um like um, dishwashers and stuff like that. Just electronic waste was 50 tons and it, that that amount was processed and uh, and turned into into raw materials to to use and uh, and produce new new um, new products in the manufacture and uh, recycling. But um, we think we we can do a lot more. And uh, one of the projects um, we we have here at at Cofactory at, at Fab City, Cordova, we we want to take that a step further and not just produce raw materials, but also um, reuse those uh, devices by well in um, for one side just by helping the the people learn about how they can repair those devices uh, we have some events like free repair uh, fairs or events uh, through the city and also uh, by um, making the customers more uh, challenging like to to the um, service providers so um, that's that's one of the projects we have so far to to reduce e-waste and repair, reuse, recycle. And uh, now Alvaro will continue on that line. Okay, thank you, Lucas. And it's important to to uh, orchestrate the effort between local communities, as as we said, the uh, uh, third layer uh, to uh, incubate the the projects, and it's important the 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 um, the founding of of our city okay so well another um effort that we are doing is to improving daily life of people with special needs we are working with institutions with uh, pub city we work with companies institutions um uh, entrepreneurs working together and one of the institution is Farfalina and it's amazing uh, who work with people with special needs and try to to reduce the gap and promoting the labor inclusion um well uh, another uh, event uh, about it this event was about the uh, sustainability and um uh, uh, mobility, sorry. So we designed uh, a challenge with Red Bull, another stakeholder uh, in the uh, layer four, um, to 
uh, design new products uh, through garbage and another stakeholder uh, to um, to give uh, and, um, the um, the festivals the industry of electronic music from res responsible uh, production uh, BMP from Ivana Balai is a festival from Argentina to the world and they are developing uh, a different projects and, and festival. This is important because we have different verticals or different uh, columns in, in the smart city or fab city. So uh, the, the festival is, is important uh, for us too. Um, the fur, the, the uh, fifth layer is promoting place-based inter uh, intervention. We are finishing now. So uh, with Red Bull, we are trying to transform the uh, aluminum cans into merchandising we are doing in another festival, Batalla de los Gallos. And we are developing with another, another stakeholder on my plastic, transforming the, the, the waste into products uh, with value. And we are transforming, as I said, the, the garbage uh, with another company. Uh, we, and with digital fabrication, uh, we produce different uh, products. And now we are working with a uh, municipality of Cordoba. This is a project will that we will be implemented in the public uh, public uh, spaces uh, through uh, digital fabrication and uh, traditional manufacturing. And Cyclia, another stakeholder, is uh, developing a, a, an application um, to resolve the, the, the waste problem in, in our city. And the last project uh, with uh, um, a, a local stakeholder, this project uh, is so interesting because in Argentina, we have a lot of water, but this uh, stakeholder, Reina Paz, um, developed um, a a system to recover raining water, great and black water, to be used in the uh, in the establishment. So, um, as you can see, we are working uh, in Fab City, uh, Cordoba, with the seven layers and different uh, kind of um, verticals. I would say yeah. verticals. Okay, so. Uh, and the 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 last project, sorry, um, this is a digital platform to uh, facilitate the supply of local products, materials, and service. This is networking.com.ir, and uh, I repeat, uh, the um, they uh, can commerce uh, with local, um, just local materials and just local services. Uh, to develop the, the the local production. Well, I think this uh, all of of Fab City Cordoba, and uh, as I said, we are protagonists of change, like this uh, beautiful and amazing global network. Wonderful! Thank you so much, Alvaro. That was amazing, and Lucas. And oh my God, I'm so sorry. I forgot the name, Matthias. <laughs> my brain. Wonderful. So let's jump now into the Q and A section. I would love to invite everyone uh, who has a question to unmute and to share, uh, even to share anything. If you have comments, that's also perfectly welcomed. If you have questions, please speak up. Uh, don't be shy to do that. Uh, we love questions. So the speakers will be, I'm sure, more than happy to answer all of them. Does anyone have anything to say at this moment? Well, uh, if I may, I would like to ask the, the guys from Cordoba to talk a little bit more about the Loop farms. I, I just got interested on the on the picture. I don't know. I saw a farm. I saw plants. So I got interested in, in that in that project. Alvaro, did you hear? I think that was a question for you guys. 
Sorry, uh, we couldn't listen. Can you repeat the, the questions, uh, Gabriel, once again? I, I think if we could talk a little bit a little bit more about the loop farms. No? Did you hear me? Okay. Um sorry, I, I listening uh, so the, the volume low, but I think it's is about loop farm project in in, in Cordoba. Yes, um, that's, that's it. Okay. That project uh, was funding by um Cordoba Ciudad Inteligente uh, with the Vid Lab, uh, and this is new in, in Cordoba. Um, I don't have uh, all the information on Loop Farm because it's an, in a, a new project that uh, I repeat, it's founding by uh, the, the Cordoba Ciudad Inteligente of Municipality of Cordoba and Core Lab. Um, but uh, I, I was talking uh, with the government to support that, that kind of of um, uh, of project because as you can see the seven layers uh, we didn't introduce too much um, city farms and we want to to improve the uh, that way you know okay thank you oh sorry uh, um you can um we will share the 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 presentation and in the presentation you have the link of the founding and in in that uh, web page you can see the the full project okay thank you thank you we had a question in the chat from uh, Leopold about uh, what can we learn from these projects for Europe so I think this is a question for um, everyone all the speakers if anyone wants to speak up Uh, yeah, I was thinking about this that question, and I saw a lot of things in Cordoba that it's kind of similar here in Curitiba, like working with kids, and it's important to engage the new generation, but also the collaboration. I think is the main point from both uh, cities. Uh, a lot of a lot of collaboration, a lot of working like together with other partners. Uh, I, I I'm curious actually what they are doing in cities in Europe, so we can share more experiences and to learn from them as well. But I think this main uh, two things like working with collaboration, community partners, and working with kids and engaging the new generation. I think are good for me. Uh, it it highlighted for me in both presentation. Uh, I, I have a second question because we we are a fab region in Austria, at least on, on, on the paper. No, nothing is going on currently. Uh, and uh, we are looking for other fab regions. And my question is, is there are there also projects in the rural areas or is it only about cities? Well, Curitiba doesn't have urban uh, uh, rural areas. It is uh, just urban, so it's the urban gardening. So I don't believe Curitiba can help with that. <laughs> so no, no rural projects anywhere. Um, hello, uh, Curitiba has um, a development of um, supports projects and actions that enhance the quality and professionalism of the family farming in the metropolitan area, linking these products to the Curitiba consumer market through the Metropolitan Agri-Food Development Program, it's uh, PRODEN, the, the name. Uh, this shortens the distance between producers and consumers, benefit, benefiting both parties.
you. Are there any more questions for the speakers? Do we have anything in the chat? Let me see. Okay, doesn't seem like it. Ile, uh, happy to, to close the session. I will just mention now the, the yeah, you were gonna say something, sorry. No, just to wrap up the session and thank everybody for joining. Uh, we know we went a little bit over time, um, but uh, we thank everybody for being here. Just a couple of heads up coming up uh, in January, we have a community exchange. Um, so uh, the round tables will be a little bit more um, like, pills, let's say, in, in a pill format from next year. We try to meet more, but for like a shorter time and exchange more and like uh, to try to really take advantage of uh, this big and beautiful network of cities that we have because uh, just, just now, for example, a, a nice conversation about uh, Europe and in comparison with the LATAM region started out and we want to really focus on this uh, kinds of exchange next year. Um, and then, of course, um, speaking of big events next year, we have the, apart from the 10th uh, anniversary of the Fab City Global Initiative that started 10 years ago in Barcelona, we also have the summit coming up in Mexico. Um, so again, something focusing on, um, on South America. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Um, and yeah, I think that, uh, if there's no other question, I think that Dayane wrote something. My question is how the selection of projects supported by the fund is carried out. I don't know if Fab City Cordova wants to uh, reply to this. Okay. Um, you have the presentation. Uh, I think Natalia shared the, the link in, in the chat. And there is um, an address of the um, Cordova Ciudad Inteligente funding. You can see there the, the, the program. And it's supported by the BitLab and um, the the process is is in the in the web page. Okay, it's Perfect. for Latin America. It's it's for Latin America. Okay, Great. And, and finally, sorry, I I want to say uh, I I want to give thanks for the community uh, because it's so interesting this roundtable and the other day with Latam uh, uh, we are learning. And we create synergy between the cities, between yeah. the fab labs, and, and I think uh, we can contribute to to um, to be uh, a better uh, and um, better process, and uh, just give thanks for for the ecosystem and the and the global network. Great. Thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, this this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the the cities. I I see that Paco has uh, raised a hand. Hey, hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, I, I had to go out of the office, but uh, just to answer about the Leopold's uh, question about the the urban uh, and the rural fab city. Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't honestly, I don't know any any example about uh, fab cities happening in the in the rural. But uh, a friend of mine, a colleague uh, from the Fab Lab Barcelona, where well, we studied together, he did a thesis about uh, the transition from the urban, I mean, the rural and the urban. So I think it's it's very interesting what Leopold is is, is mentioned now because uh, I think there's happening a mix. We see it now with Curitiba uh, ha having this urban garden in the city and all that. I think we we have a lot to, to learn about the, the rural. And I think uh, there's like this uh, combination now uh, calling the uh, uh, urban, right? Like uh, rural and urban together. So uh, if Leopold is interested in, in that information, I can share it uh, happily. Thank you for the presentation and congratulations to everyone, especially to Fab City Cordoba. What what the style, Paco, riding a, riding a bike. <laughs> 
Yeah, very fashion, very stylish. Thanks, Paco, for this um, this contribution. Um, so yeah, um, I see that Frida already pasted the useful links in the chat. Uh, we can continue this conversation. You can share your email here if you would like to receive more updates um, and more useful resources. You can also subscribe to our newsletter and you, you can subscribe also to our blog. We post all the goodies there and we send uh, monthly newsletters that uh, we believe can be very useful and beneficial for the network um, and everybody involved. Um, so yeah, let's stay connected. Thank you very much again for joining. And if there's no other in contribution, we can um, leave the room and see each other again next year. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kulitiba. Bye-bye.